Let's see what my goat is saying. Try to take you out. So I'm going to give you some big breaking news, right? Aaron is 18. He's yeah. handsome. He's yeah. tall. Yeah. He's rich. He's got the whole world. He's right unleashed here. in New York City. Yeah. Are you sure you want to reverse Roe v. Wade now? <laughs> so I do have good kids and uh, five really wonderful children. This is great content. And if you don't recognize this for, as great content, I don't know what to, to tell you. Chat is getting in its own way once again. If you have any issues with this, this is going to be good. No drugs, hmm. no alcohol, no cigarettes. I yeah. would say that. Did you say that to Don Jr.? I, yeah, Don's a little wild. <laughs> <laughs> what? I do think this is bad as a softball interview, man. You criticize it for other people you don't like. Why not Trump? Wait, what? Yeah, I know it's a softball interview. What the f are you talking about? We've moved past that point. Now is the, now is the time to see how normies are going to see Trump in an appealing fashion. And what that might do, what that might do for his election chances. After the Theo Vaughn shit, I was like, bro, Donald Trump is is getting humanized at an alarming rate for a lot of the low propensity voters out here in this entire fucking podcast circuit. At first, like I was like, the Aiden Ross shit is like, you know, it's neither here nor there. But having said that, since then, he's done a lot of these fucking media placements and he's cooking. He just comes across as like very normal. I think it's definitely working. Yeah, his vibes are very 2016, witty, off the cuff, smooth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so said, that's can, we can we forget that this man literally just said Haitians are eating cats and dogs? The fuck are we talking about? Sound he sounds normal. He does. He sounds normal here. That's the problem. People forget that he said he's eating cats and dogs. Well, you know how people could remember that if Kamala Harris actually launched a fucking counter messaging campaign against his anti-immigrant screeds. If one major group is not constantly hammering that point, people are gonna forget. People are going to move past it. So take it up with them, not me. What do you want me to do? Surely in the interest of impartiality towards candidates, you would consider watching Kamala Harris during interview in full after this? Probably not. The less I watch Kamala Harris, the better it is for her chances, at least in this community. Because when I watch Donald Trump, I'm going to shit on him. When I watch Kamala Harris, it makes me want to fucking myself in a video game my father was so proud of me he was he was a successful guy dog your father bailed you out like 11 times what are you talking about and you still bankrupt the casino it's a different world <laughs> out there you guys and some others elon interviewed me on something yeah and i think they said 275 million wow hits or that's, a lot, that's a lot of people but it's a whole new different way of uh can getting, I ask you a question getting the word out right? about Elon specifically? Is he your favorite African American? <laughs> <laughs> he's a piece of work. Okay. Yeah. You know he's a great guy. Yeah. With I mean he's obviously a brilliant guy. Yeah. I mean when I saw the rocket engines come back, there's nothing that reminds me that I'm just like not living in the same plane of existence as these people than like the fucking relentless Elon glazing. Every time I hear people talk about him on like these terms, I'm just like we are not on the same planet, dude. We just straight up are living in alternative realities, I think. I'm in a parallel universe. Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense, dude. Donald Trump himself has made fun of Elon. Like, is Elon your favorite African-American? Is like, yeah, sure. Haha, uh, -ha, it's funny, okay? I've heard it a million times over. It, it's neither here nor there. But, like, when they just start talking about how brilliant he is, I'm like, how? Like, you don't, there's no way you have to believe this. Like, there's no way you can believe this, right? Like, it just, oh, my God. I hate that shit more than like thinking that Donald Trump is a good dad. Elon went out and he loved the crowd. He yeah. loves the country. Yeah. And he's picked a side. A lot of people don't want to pick a side. I have a lot of people that are big supporters of me. Yeah. But they, they won't go all out. You know, they, they can't They're scared. quite. Mm. There's a cost. Yeah. yeah. There's a cost. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Major cost for being a supporter of the guy who was the former president. This is like, this is... Straight up fake victimhood nonsense that right wingers ran on for so goddamn long, dude. It's the same shit. They did this in like 2016. Oh, we're the silent majority. It's like, bitch, you are not silent. Okay. You should be. And you are not the majority either. Yeah. This, this is also a good point. Trump admitting that there's a social cost deciding with him is pretty funny. But yeah. It, it just basically says like, <laughs> it basically shows that he understands that he is like a repulsive individual in the eyes of many. I guess he sees that. He's a room reader, you know? You know, my uncle, Dr. John Trump, uh, he was like a really brilliant guy. He was there for, I think, 41 years. He's the longest serving professor in the history of MIT. Oh, wow. So when I understand physics and when I understand things well, they say, how come you, s I have, there's good genetics. You know, I'm a believer. Mm -hmm. Are you guys believers in that? <laughs> Were your parents funny? 
Were my, they comedians? Uh, yeah, my, my mom's. Oh, my God. He's going to do the. Oh, this is my favorite Trump take. This is one of my favorite rare Trump takes. OK, he's he's gearing up for it. He's going to say because his uncle is so brilliant, he's also brilliant, but he doesn't want to say it directly. So he's just being like, oh, you're funny, right? Your parents are funny. That's that's me and my uncle. <laughs> Osmosis. It's in the genetics. It's in the genes. If you don't have humor, you won't even survive. Wait, what, why is that? Because I think you have to have you have to have a light side. I see a lot of dark things. I see horrible things. I think I see things that are bad. I see political things that are hard. I mean, we have a lot of corrupt people in this country, and I see it. These are great questions. What <laughs> the hell, dude? Trump is so good at making you feel important. He's so good at like on these interviews. Like he, you, you understand? He is a glad handler. No, it's not a eh. No, 100%, dude. He always does this shit. Dude, dude, dude. He is a con man through and through. This is con man behavior, okay? He is a narcissistic con man, and he is so good after years and years of fucking wheeling and dealing. He's so bad at business, but he's very good at just like, oh, these questions, they're so good. He did this with like Theo Vaughn too, you know? Yeah, what are we talking about? He conned a nation, dude. That's like, that's peak, okay? And he still continues to do so. I'm sorry. If you think that he is not a successful con man, I don't know what to tell you. He literally conned like tens of millions of Americans into thinking that he gives a single solitary shit about them when it is so obvious he does not, okay? And he's not like a particularly smart individual either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't get these questions from the fake news. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rosie O'Donnell like, asking like this. Like deface the nation. <laughs> yeah. Have the woman on deface Brennan. She's on deface the nation. She was terrible with with uh, you know the way she handled uh, JD Vance, who did a great job the yeah. other night. He but, did you a know, great job. But I don't get questions like that. For you. did you ever hear of the show Deface, ladies and gentlemen? It's Donald Trump on. Deface the nation. It's called face the nation. They hate me. Yeah, he loves he lo he loves his little jokes. It's called defaced. It's called face the nation. But you see what I did there? I call it deface the nation. <laughs> oh, he loves God. His little jokes, man. Explaining his joke. I've they never, spend they spend was, millions of dollars. Like, name a show that? <laughs> oh God. Oh gross. 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 That's gross. Glaze. You did not think it's that funny. You did not think it's that funny. God damn. Have some self-respect, dude. Oh, I see. They spend, you didn't hear of it. That's good. They spend millions of dollars on the name C CBS. Yeah. And then I come along and I say to face, the, it's face the nation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's still explaining it. Come hey, on. Yeah. Or meet the fake press. Yeah. You know, meet the press. You're yeah. good at this. I say meet the fake press. Yeah. Oh, he, and looks, he, he thinks this is genuine. Trump is reading this as genuine enthusiasm. Oh, God. This is so stupid. It's like, well, oh, tell me more, Mr. President. They're laughing at him, not with him. He's reading it as they're laughing with him. But the real reason why they're laughing is because they're laughing thinking about their bank accounts. Okay. They're like, oh my God, we got a fucking softball interview with Donald Trump. We are going to do such insane numbers. Okay. Which they did. Two million views in a matter of eight. 24 hour time frame. It's pretty good. 